<laughs> okay. Now, welcome everyone to the live coverage of YCS Ghent. Thank you for tuning on in. Thanks for stopping by again. We have the ninth round going in. This is going to be a rough one. This is going to be a hard one for the 10th round. The ninth round happened, you know, pendulums were being played and we had a winner. So then, now, welcoming to the stage, Oliver. What up, man? How are you doing? How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling fine. I'm a little bit ill, but it's okay. Ah, okay, so you had a bit of tea, and hopefully you're feeling a bit better for the match. Ah, okay, that's good. So then, you know, going to this event, thinking to yourself, oh, I need to play 11 rounds of this event. What is your preparation process? How do you get focused, and how do you get prepared? Um, I had to prepare a lot, um, because this season my goal is to top a YCS. So it's good that I'm sitting here. Okay, okay, that's pretty nifty. That's dope. Um, so then, do you think that this deck is the one you probably have it to take it down? I think my deck is the best deck in the format. Um, I'm fine with it. All right, all right, take a seat. We'd have to see what your competitor has to say about that. All right. And then, on the blue corner, we have Kevin. What up, Kevin? No, come in closer. It's okay. Come in. Come on in. Come on in. Nobody's going to hurt you. It's okay. Um, <laughs> so, more or less, I'm mirroring the same questions, the same questions, same to after you. Like, how do you feel about the deck you brought into the event? I feel pretty good. It worked pretty well. It worked pretty well before. So, I hope the best. Okay. So, like, I kind of I know what you're playing, more or less. Um, it's going to be an interesting one. I hope your viewers are really tuned in for this. It's going to be it's going to be an awesome duel. I can I can promise you that. So it could take us, eh? Thank you. So, without further ado, without further ado, if the players are ready. You guys are ready? Let's head it over to the casters. Hi guys, welcome to round 10. We've got a very interesting feature match lined up today. We've managed to pick out a spiral deck on the yep. top tables. And Kevin is really famous for the deck. He has played it at German, at all the YCSs basically. And also he has topped a regional with it last week. Oh, so, so he's in good shape. Yes, he So when is. JJ asks, are you confident with the deck? He's like, well, I've only been playing it for the last... 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm confident with the deck. And then on the other side of the table, we have Oliver. Yeah. More traditional choice of deck. Yes, and also more traditional build of the deck. It's uh, Salomon Great, and he's running all the hand traps. All this the hand traps, except for the new one. Yeah, except for Nibiru, or sh uh, Dimension Shifter, which arguably is not the best card for that deck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dimension Shifter and Salaman Grey. <laughs> Whoops. That's, that's smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, no Nibiru. And, I mean, Kevin yeah. has got a plan for the Nibiru, so he's got access to Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, so you can summon it off Mermaid, give it to your opponent, yep. and then they can't Nibiru you. Uh, but the traditional hand traps that he's running, Vela and uh, Vela, Ghost, Ghost Spell, Bell and Ghost, Ghost Ogre. Ogre, none of them stop viably. So, nope. pretty solid for him. Yes, so I think the players should be ready. Uh, they're just swapping sides. Oh, they're swapping sides. Okay, so <laughs> let's just take a look at the side deck while we are waiting. So. Oliver is actually playing Anti-Spell Fragrance, a card that I haven't seen much of this weekend. Yeah, might be pretty good against Spiral, because it's, it's a combo deck. I mean, it runs a lot of monsters, but the spells they have are all really powerful. You're talking Monster Reborn, Reinforcement of the Army, One for One, <laughs> yeah. Foolish Burial. All the one-offs, all the crazy one-offs. Uh, the Field Spell, of course, Spiral yeah. Resort. 
And uh, as I already said, the Salmon Grade build is a bit more traditional. Like in the last format, Anti Spell was also really popular in Salmon Grade. To count all the last, last, the format before the last format. The format before the last, yeah, last format. Where we format. had three Kagaris and Sky Strike was really, really dominant. Um, people used to run the Anti Spell Fragrance to set it up with a war and then go Heat Layer in the next turn to just not let your opponent enter the game. <laughs> It's uh, yeah. a good way of winning the game. Yeah, indeed. That is there. a really good way to win the game. And uh, now I think the players are ready. It does look like it to <laughs> me. So let's just go over. All oh right. dear. Do you see wow, that? Wow, that's a triple copy of Ash Blossom and Joyce. Triple, that's triple. <laughs> well, I mean, he gets to use, you know, at least one of them. Every Ash turn. Blossom being one of the most powerful cards in Salamangre in particular. And he has the <laughs> drone, <laughs> which is going to stack oh the deck. No. So he knows what he's going to play against, and I think that Oliver is not going to see any kind of plays in the next three turns. That's nasty. That's a Foxy and Ogre. I think Ogre is going to see the top. Maybe. Or Raw, maybe. It was one of the nastiest things. I always put the rage, uh, the Raw to the top. Yeah. Fairly reasonable, because the counter trap's not going to do very much on... You know, after you've yeah. set up all your combos. So <laughs> reveal the top this card. It's just brutal. Oliver's got to know yeah. he's going nowhere for a long time. And he can't even scoop preemptively because he knows that his opponent knows his deck already. Yeah, I was thinking it's pretty nasty to concede yeah. when your opponent plays their first card. But if you yeah. if you've got triple ash and it's it, yeah. it it might be something you'd consider. Kevin just reminding him that you can't target spiral monsters under the effect of oh, spiral resort. Yeah. Nah. Can he still activate Ash? Uh, yes. He should be able to, right? I mean, it's an illegal activation. It doesn't mean... Yeah, it doesn't you mean the game state like progresses. Yeah. Um, but he's not going to Ash it. I don't know what he's holding out for. Maybe a copy of Master Plan. But Kevin has unfortunately drawn the Master Plan, so it's going <laughs> to take him by surprise. So Kevin mm, might not be too happy about it, but he probably... I mean, he could still go into Orcus combo, then, wow, he can extend so hard. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> he can go into Orcus combo, he discard the master plan. I mean, he's not doing that. Um, but he can discard the master plan and then summon it back with the car with Big Red. Yeah, he can just discard it for Quick Fix. Yeah, that works as well. <laughs> that was the, uh, the old school. I think, I mean, Oliver's got literally nothing. He's just got his triple ash. And yep. Baylor. Um... Kevin now knows the Veiler is coming, yep. but I mean, he's probably like, yep. okay. And I mean, now Oliver knows that he is <laughs> probably going to lose this one and that his opponent knows his deck, so he might as well just watch what Kevin is playing. Yeah, that's a nice thing, because you, you know, like, you see some spiral cards. It might be pure spiral, but it might be something else. Yep. So it's, yeah, it's, it's heads up. Just see what your board your opponent's going to set up. Because yep. Kevin is likely going to set up. There's no reason, like, not to set up the most powerful board you can. Um, so Oliver can see what he's got to prepare for in the next games. Even if, I mean, again, like when you're playing such a heavy combo deck, the games, I, d I don't want to say this because it will obviously not come true, but <laughs> games can be a way, way quicker when you play a, like a heavy combo deck where you do all of your stuff on one turn and then it's kind of, yeah. you play a lot of like one turn games. Um, there we go, the classic old Let's Summon our Unicorn. And shuffle back the spiral resort. I've only got one resort, yeah. so I'll shuffle it back. And you've got to search it out with the master plan, so Unicorn yeah. has to target your own resort. Standard spiral combo stuff. Since the limiting of everyone yeah. thought, you know, spiral resort to one, well, now you can't you search it with master plan if you've already drawn it. Yeah. But no, <laughs> put it back into your own deck. Make Firewall Dragon here, obviously. <laughs> And it's Appaloosa, <laughs> so the Ash Blossom won't do anything. So Ash Blossom can't even... Oh, he can accompany it with the Effect Baylor, right? Oh, that's true. What that happens to Appaloosa when you Baylor it? Does it lose all of its attack? Kevin seems to think so. And it can just negate the Baylor. Can it negate twice in the same chain? I wouldn't know why it shouldn't. Uh, Most of these ne negations are once per turn, are they not? I think Appaloosa isn't once per turn at all. Like, Two once per turn months. for sure. Oh, it's, it's once per chain, though. Yeah. So you ash it, and then he responds with so Appaloosa, and then you Valor it. not like the Light and Darkness String. 
because that one could be outplayed by activating two cards in the same chain. No, this one can as well. It says once oh. per chain. Oh, so... Ah, okay, so it got negated. Okay, I missed that. Yeah, so the Veiler negated the Appaloosa. Oh, okay. But then, I mean, <laughs> you can see the Orcus combo. And now <laughs> he, he's just, decided. he just wanted to know if there is an Orcus combo or not. It's one thing I might have been, I mean, Oliver might see the, the Nightmare, um, the Orcus Nightmare and say, aha, he's just going to do an Orcus combo. Um, it's not guaranteed, actually. So I have seen players search Orcus Nightmare just as a, as a Nightmare monster to summon. Just use it in part of a combo, so you can use it to make, for example, Draco Sack because it's level yep. seven. That's what he did at German Nationals. So it's not guaranteed yep. that um, that you're playing all of the Orcus cards just because you searched one Orcus Nightmare. So it might be used for something else. So maybe a, a slightly premature yep. concession from Oliver, but maybe I mean he, he is correct in this case. There are more Orcus cards following, but not not guaranteed. So. That was a pretty sharp first game. Pretty, we've seen some pretty brutal draws for the Salaman Great deck so far. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> last last we've heard last game yesterday, Max von Neversale. Yeah. <sighs> Two rounds of Salaman Great, and yet to see a Sunlight Wolf hit the board. Yep, or a Gazelle <laughs> Resolve, or a Gazelle <laughs> Resolve, or uh, any Salaman Great. And the, we've seen a lone Balanx, but he'd already drawn the Sanctuary when he summoned the Balanx. <laughs> And you still try to search because yeah. people, if we cast, <laughs> always do they that. Do. So, looking at the side decks, what do you th what do you predict from Kevin? I'm predicting the bureau because it's really strong versus Salmon Great if they combo off. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to go for a Cosmic Cyclone because it gets rid of the trap that can be searched, like the Rage or the Roar. The thing I found with Salamangre is you could side almost anything yep. because they do monsters and they do traps, and you can choose yep. which one you think is more important. So you could do New Bird to shut down all their monsters. You could do Mind Control, yep. take their monsters. And um, Kevin also cites like archetype cards. He cites Spiral Tough. Spiral Tough's one of them nice. People used to go second with it because yep. it was a very nice control card. We've got 1,900 attack, normal summon it, threaten to pop a card. So it's a bit of a strange one because it's what you don't know how to respond to it necessarily, because it says target card, and then if you guess right on the top of the deck, and you might know, but if you guess right on the top of the deck, then it destroys it. So from your opponent, even if it's not always gonna destroy it if it actually resolved, <laughs> you kind of have to negate it anyway. If yeah. it targets your Salamangre Roar or whatever, you might as well just negate it. So it does the job of destroying something, even if it's not always gonna destroy something. Does it target? Yes. Okay. Um, and obviously, it's even more powerful when it's backed up with a spiral resort, because then it can't be targeted itself. Yeah. And then... And I mean, you get the valuable information of... Yes, you get to see the top, top card of the deck, is. and then the agent can come down knowing that it's going to hit. Popping another card. And then on the flip side, we have some very hard-to-read cards, but they, they have a lot of <laughs> crossover in their side deck, Imperial actually. Imperial Order, Nibiru, Twin Twisters, Mind Control, some scratched-out cards, Anti-Spell Fragrance, and Artifact Lancia. Yeah. So again, maybe he saw the Orcus cards and might pop in the Lancia. I would be surprised. I don't think I would side in Lancia because it doesn't do enough against the Spiral cards. No, I think... Or do these Spiral cards actually do a lot? Can he extra link with his extra deck? He can go... I mean, he's probably not going to go Unicorn. He doesn't play the Trigate. No, so that doesn't look like an extra link to me. So I think this looks like Appaloosa with Orcus combo. And possibly a... Griffin. A oh, Spiral... Playing. Yeah. Um... Sleeper. Yeah, and he plays a uh, Curious Griffin combo. Yes, to search his Imperial Order. So, yeah. Maybe the anti spell, because you're going first and it's just a very powerful card going first. And maybe, I mean, I, I, I'd be surprised to see Nibiru. <laughs> oh Look goodness. at this hand again. Go spell Ash Blossom Joy. You should not play Salomon Great on stream. Yeah, I think the, the crowd have seen it too. Yep. Um, wow. So he's just going to shotgun that. I mean, it's 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 somehow um, stuffed up. Kevin here, he's got his Nibiru that he was all... His Im Nibiru and his impermanence, and you know what? They're not going to do anything. <laughs> no, but I think he's not too sad about it. <laughs> he's not it. too sad to see his opponent pass. Yeah. He can set the impermanence down, and he can he use can his two dangers. Yeah, he can set the impermanence in the same column as anti spell, so he can turn it off on his turn if he wants. Yep. Um, 
again, it's really mean. If you don't draw your cards and you draw your anti-spell, then there's even less yeah. cards you could top deck to get out of the situation. So Nibiru's being discarded. Oh, that's excellent for Kevin, because that's a card he just didn't need. And he draws <laughs> into a snake. So this Orcus combo is kind of... I mean, I would say it's guaranteed, but there are three hand trips oh, plus yeah. Phantasme, so... Do you think in Kevin's situation... Um, you pop the anti-spell with Phoenix? No, you, oh. you just <gasps> forego Link Summoning. Because oh. you see that Oliver's got nothing. He's not even gone so far as to set a monster. Yeah, there could be a Phantasme. So, yeah, Phantasme is a card that, you know, summons itself, yep. draws you more cards as well. So it, it seems to me like he could. He's just going to summon a load of dangers. I mean, he might even... I, I would be very heads up on his part if he could put on 8,000 damage without summoning um, a Link monster, which is possible given the number of dangers he summoned. He's already got, what, 36 on board. Uh, he's still got the Orcus monster. So if possible, it would be a very smart play from Kevin to try and put the 8,000 on board without summoning a Link monster. Challenge his deck might not be capable of, but it's something to consider, right? No. But even so, I wouldn't be too... I, I, I would consider the play of just attacking with everything. Yeah, and I mean, he has the impermanence as a backup, so... He's it's, got it's his own backup. You know, yeah. the Nightmare in Grave isn't going to go anywhere. He can still use it next turn, or he can just summon a couple of Orcus monsters. Okay, so he 